This problem says a projectile is fired straight upward. If the distance above the ground after t seconds is given by s of t is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 300 t, part a find the time at which the projectile hits the ground. Okay, so to find the, the time at which the projectile hits the ground, if the distance above the ground is the s, then that means that when s is equal to zero, that would be when the projectile hits the ground. So let's set zero is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 300 t. And to solve this equation for t, we can factor out of t. So we get zero is equal to t times negative 4.9 t plus 300. Now that we have it into factors, we can set each one of our factors equal to zero separately. So we have one that is t is equal to zero, but that would be the time when the projectile is fired straight upward. So that one's not when the, the time at which the projectile hits the ground again. So we can use the other factor that zero is equal to negative 4.9 t plus 300. Moving that to the other side, we get 4.9t is equal to 300, and 300 divided by 4.9 is 61.2, rounded to the nearest tenth. So it would take 61.2 seconds for the projectile to hit the ground again. So that would be part A. For part B, it says find the velocity at which the projectile hits the ground. So we already know the time when the projectile hits the ground. We can find the velocity because the velocity is the derivative of the, the distance function. So the velocity function would be equal to 2 times 4.9 is 9.8, so negative 9.8 t, that's using the power rule, plus 300. And then, because the, the derivative of 300 t is 300. Then plugging in our time to get v of 61.2 would be negative 9.8 times 61.2 plus 300, which is negative 9.8 times 61.2 is negative 599 plus 300 gives us negative 299.76 and it doesn't actually say what the unit is um, for the height. I would assume that it would be meters potentially. Um, so that would make it a unit of meters per second. But if the problem was given, it technically doesn't tell us what the, um, what the unit of the distance is. And it makes sense that the velocity would be negative because when a projectile is moving down, it has a negative velocity. Okay, so for part C, it asks, what is the maximum altitude achieved by the projectile? So the maximum altitude would happen when it hits the vertex of the parabola. And we can find that by using the velocity function and setting the velocity equal to zero to get the, um, that would be the critical point here where the velocity is equal to zero. So we get zero is equal to negative 9.8 t plus 300. Moving that over, we get 9.8t is equal to 300. And 300 divided by 9.8, grabbing my calculator, gives me t is equal to 30.6 seconds. Which also makes sense that the, um, or wait a second, that would be, that would be the time at which the maximum altitude is achieved, which makes sense that it would be half of the time when it hits the ground again. 
but we're looking for the maximum altitude, not the time, um, not the time at which it achieves the maximum altitude. So let's take this time and plug it back into our our distance function, which gives us s of 30.6 is equal to negative 4.9 times 30.6 squared plus 300 times, let me write that better, 300 times 30.6. So simplifying negative 4.9 times 30.6 squared plus 300 times 30.6 oops hold on I messed up in my calculator squared plus 300 times 30.6 okay gives me 4,591.8, rounding to the nearest tenth. And again, I don't know what that height is, but I would assume it would be in meters because like miles doesn't really make sense or kilometers, but, and that's a common unit. Okay, so there we go. That's our maximum altitude with an assumption on the unit. And for part D, the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So the idea is that when you have the distance function, you take the first derivative, it gives you velocity. And if you take the second derivative, it gives you acceleration. So taking the, acceler the derivative of velocity, we have negative 9.8t. When we take the derivative of that, the t just goes away and we get negative 9.8 and the derivative of any constant goes to zero. So the acceleration is always negative 9.8. And that would be part D. So I hope this video step-by-step -step solution was helpful for you. If it was, please like the video and also subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos that are similar to this one doing homework help step-by-step -step problems. If you would like to support my channel um, or my project of doing homework help questions that are accessible to anyone free of charge, um, I have some links down in the description. And thanks for watching.